my name is Paige. Welcome to my channel. This is the third vlog in a four-part series about my study abroad trip to London, Oxford, and Stratford-upon-Avon. This vlog will cover our fourth and fifth days in London, aka our last days in London, and our time at the British Museum, Westminster Abbey, the Doc Martin store, and more. If you're new here and you want to start at the beginning, you can click the link here or you can just begin here. I hope you enjoy! <laughs> When you enter the museum, you're taken into room 24. At the time we went, they had a gallery called Living and Dying, which basically explores how people across the globe get through life and experience death. You'll see us looking at various pieces from New Zealand, Ghana, the Solomon Islands, South America, and the North American Arctic. When our study abroad coordinator added the British Museum into our agenda, I was really excited. <gasps> oh, ship. Yep, much bigger. I'm 100% not joking when I say museums are my favorite places to be, besides libraries and bookstores. Sadly, we didn't have a lot of time to spend here because we had a lecture shortly after, but we wanted to at least see the ancient Egypt and ancient Greece and Rome exhibits. I wasn't going to leave the British Museum without seeing the Rosetta Stone, either. If you go left from here instead of straight into the Greece and Rome exhibit, you get to the Assyrian exhibit where they have the full-scale replica of the Balawat gates. These depict the lives of the Assyrian kings and used to guard the Assyrian city of Balawat until the empire fell in 614 BC. Oh god. Oh god, where, where's his nose? The patron god of no nose. As you can see from the picture, this is actually a handle that was meant to honor the god Achilles. I was really excited to see this piece because I actually just finished The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller and Circe. Later on, I came across a very small statue of Icarus. If you haven't read Circe by Madeline Miller, Icarus and his father, Daedalus, actually show up in the novel, so I was pretty excited to see even the smallest reference to him. If you don't know the story of Icarus and the Sun, Icarus's father was actually a very famous blacksmith who designed the both wings made of wax feathers. Even though they worked, Daedalus warned his son that if he flew too close to the sun, the sun would melt his wax wings. And um, yeah, that happened. This exhibit had a lot of busts on display, unsurprisingly, but I was super excited to see that they had a philosopher's corner where I got to see my friend Socrates. And they had a cool bust of Alexander the Great. As we were finishing up in the Parthenon galleries, we discovered there was a Japanese exhibit upstairs. I've always been fascinated by Japanese culture because, I mean, 
I'm part Japanese, but also because I grew up with the anime explosion in America. So we ventured upstairs, passed by the Egyptian mummies, and then finally found Japan. Day, we ended up going to a place called Antalya in Russell Square. I had never been to a Turkish restaurant before, so I kind of got the most basic things you could get. I already knew I liked hummus, so I got that and I got a skewered chicken. But before my entree came, I ended up eating so much hummus that I could barely touch the chicken. And now when I try to think back to that restaurant, even though I remember it being extremely good, that's why I ate so much hummus, I almost get sick. <laughs> Westminster Abbey was definitely one of the most, if not the most, anticipated stop during this trip. And I have to admit that while the location itself is every bit as impressive as you would think it would be, the experience wasn't that great. Our group split into two, so we each had a different tour guide, and while our tour guide was very nice and funny, we could barely hear him because it was so loud inside. There were so many tourists that there was no room to move or breathe or really like see anything up close. If you're thinking about visiting Westminster Abbey, maybe keep in mind that we went in mid-May on a Saturday at 9am and don't go during that time. After the tour concluded, Troy and I split off and went to Spittlefields. Uh, completely by accident, we stumbled across Poppy's fish and chips, which seems to be kind of a staple. Correct me if I'm wrong. We both obviously got fish and chips. I got cod and he got haddock, and it was really good. So after we got done at Poppy's, we met up with a couple of our friends. You've probably seen them before. And we decided to go to the Doc Martin store. When Troy and I knew we were going to England, we knew that we wanted to get Doc Martens. It's already been kind of on our agenda for a while, but we figured why get them in the US when we could get them in London? We actually ended up wandering around a few shoe stores because we didn't know that there were official Doc Martens stores, which, duh. But every shoe store we went to sold Doc Martens, but they didn't sell made in England Doc Martens. I didn't realize that most Doc Martens are actually made in Vietnam now, which to each his own, but since we were in London, it felt kind of weird to get Doc Martens made in Vietnam. So when we ended up going to the Doc Martens store, there was a very small display of made in England Doc Martens, which were significantly pricier. But since we had come all the way to England for Doc Martens, not really, we decided to splurge. I got these. Pretty classic, except they're a little bit of a softer leather than the hard leather ones that Troy got. <sighs> 
but I wanted them softer so they didn't hurt my feet as much because I've heard that Doc Martens can really screw your feet up. I don't know if that's true or not. If any of you have Doc Martens, let me know. One thing my mom demanded I get her from England was Mr. Kipling cakes. So we went across the street from our hotel and did some perusing while we were still in London and had access to a supermarket. I can now vouch that they're pretty solid. I also got some chips and things to take back to the hotel room where we were inevitably going to crash with exhaustion. Yeah, so that's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed. You'll see the last London vlog this Thursday coming up, and you'll also see a new video from me on Saturday about what I've read so far in 2019. Hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you back here on Saturday.